Welcome back to AL.com Film Room. I'm John Parker Wilson with Auburn analyst Cole Kubik. Just finished up the 2014 Iron Bowl in a game that we saw many firsts. We saw Alabama and Auburn score 99 points, the, the highest point total in, uh, in the Iron Bowl. We saw Nick Marshall set the school record with passing yards. We saw Amari Cooper tie his uh, school record. It set the Iron Bowl record for passing yards. Sammy Coates with 206 coming in right behind him. So a, a game that I think both of us didn't see come, didn't expect it um, with that many points and that much offense. I didn't expect Nick Marshall to have that kind of a game. And I, I think back to 1999 and myself and Ben Leard in Athens, Georgia, when he set that school record, if you'd have said, well, Nick Marshall's going to break that record in this game, I would have said, no, not against that Alabama defense. Now, I thought that Auburn would be able to move the football on this defense. We talked about it because – the way Gus Malzahn can space that defense out, utilize Nick Marshall on the perimeter, be able to find some runs on the edge. But Alabama did a nice job bringing that extra defender to the line of scrimmage, really doing some things to confuse Nick Marshall with the zone read on the perimeter, on the edge. And that's what gave them some one-on-ones on the outside. Duke Williams, fantastic game. Sammy Coates was lights out. But in the end, Auburn's defense just couldn't hold up. Yeah, exactly right. And that's what I thought coming into the game was going to be the Auburn's defense versus the Alabama offense. But, you know, we gave up the, uh, the passing games in order to stop that spread offense that Alabama has feared since last year playing the Auburn game. So kind of sold out in the run game to stop, to stop the pass. And let's take a look at that as we get into to the highlights right here from the Iron Bowl. Okay, we knew coming in Alabama was going to try to get the ball to Mari Cooper any way they could. We saw it early right here in the first, in the first quarter. Cole, what do you think from the, from the Auburn defense? What do you see from these guys? we got man coverage across the board, safety in the middle of the field, first and ten. you got to think we're going to throw it to Amari. No, I'm fine with man coverage. It's just if you're going to go single safety, to me that says, all right, Whitehead, 35, who's your single safety, is going to basically have to help everybody who's lined up on the line of scrimmage. Well, really and truly, I only need your help with one guy. What did we say last week? Amari Cooper is the bomb. If you don't want to be hit by the shrapnel, diffuse the explosive device. Well, they got hit with a lot of shrapnel, and the bomb blew up. But if you run it back to the beginning, John Parker, if really Amari Cooper is your main concern, why, why is your safety not up here on the numbers or closer on the hash? I, we don't need you in the middle of the field if you're going to have to worry about Amari Cooper. I, that was what I talked about last week with – Blatant double coverages, blatantly trying to take away Amari Cooper. And to me, this is kind of playing straight up. This is saying, all right, we feel like Jonathan Jones can handle Amari Cooper by himself. No one truly should believe that. But if you're going to give safety help, go ahead and give safety help up there. If one of these other guys beats you, so be it. Yeah, and I also think – I don't like the way the corner's playing, and I don't know if this was game plan or how they wanted to do it, but he's just staring at Amari. He's not giving up the underneath ball or giving – he's not even defending the deep ball. He's just kind of playing in no man's land. He's flat-footed right here, and you can see Amari in the sprinter stance. He's just going to run right by him every time. He's looking for an underneath route, and Amari is just – he's ready to run. It doesn't, doesn't slow down. No contact at the line of scrimmage, and, and this is going to be a reoccurring theme. We're going to talk about this with a few of those, but to me – if there's anything that can maybe assist you with slowing Amari Cooper down, you've got to be physical with him at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I don't think we've seen anybody do that all year, is the bump, hard bump coverage earlier. They're just playing off, trying to wait for him to make a move. And if you're going to do that, I think you've got to have safety help over the top. Fast forward to the third quarter right here, and we see Amari Cooper run another double move that we've also seen tons of times this year. Um, and not a real defined coverage by the Auburn secondary. They're kind of left in no man's land. Um, and I think this is a little bit of the respect factor for Amari. We're, we're going to try to play off but not really commit a guy over top. We'll see him right here come and set up. And when he gets to this point right here, the, the safety that, that's got him one-on-one is beat. Amari can run the corner route, but also he can run this post route, which he does. And when he sets up the corner right here, he's wide open. Lane Kiffin knows it before the ball is even thrown. Yeah, we got it. Lane Kiffin he, puts his hands He's up. raising We've his hands down here. Times. And, you right. know, how many times does he do that and they don't score? No one's circling no that. No one's circling that, but how many times is Auburn going to let Amari go over the top? Um, you know, I would just – it's just like we talked about a second ago. We're Run not it putting... back to the, to, the, to the beginning. And like we said on the, final, on the last play, one thing I want to point out right here, it doesn't have a lot to do with this play, but Blake Sims doesn't get much credit for this. Watch these two right here just really bite on this play action fake. Just a fantastic job. And, and you can imagine if the linebackers believe that this is this, if they're buying into the play action this much, you got to think the safeties are as well. I mean, a good two, three steps up for those guys. And then, of course, able to just finish it off uh, with, with the touchdown. But 
going back again, that reoccurring theme like we talked about with Amari Cooper at the line of scrimmage, what are you going to do when he's coming off the ball? How are you going to handle him off the ball? And you'll see right here, absolutely no jam, no contact. Don't, don't even extend the arms. You're just going to let him run around you and then go run around. To me, that is unacceptable. First and 10 coming off a of kickoff right here. We see another double move from Amari Cooper. Uh, another play action pass early. We see the linebackers getting, getting sucked up early again. And, you know, a zone coverage by Auburn, but, but nobody's really playing the zone deep. Yeah, you, you know this concept a little bit better than I do, John Parker, but it's confusing to me when you take a look at it here. Three's going to try to get a bump on Cooper in the slot. Still doesn't get anything on him. So physically, you're not challenging him at the line of scrimmage. And then you look down at Mincy here in the bottom of the screen. It's kind of like, what are you looking at? He's Obviously, that's the zone scheme. But the thing that frustrates me is, again, your safety help is going to be over the top. And so you want your safety there. But you'll see right here, biting on that post route, which is completely unacceptable in my mind. Who cares if he catches this ball here? What, I, no one should care about that. This is where your problem is, and it's just not going to be there. Whitehead takes the post on the middle of the field, and Amari Cooper is able to just go over the top of that defense again. It's a nice job by Kiffin moving him around, having him in different places on the field, making him uncoverable, I guess you would say. But at the end of the day, Amari Cooper is an elite route runner, and I don't think if you, if you don't go out of your way to find a creative, new, different way to slow him down – this is what you're going to continue to get. Yeah, this is standard cover three. So this corner has the deep third. The safety has the middle third. And this guy that, that the safety is worried about, this corner is supposed to guard that area. So really the safety is worried about the wrong things. He's got all deep balls. He's playing center field um, and you know, kind of leaves six over here on an island by himself. When his eyes are in looking at the quarterback, Amari makes that double move and, and the safety has got his eyes in the wrong spot. I think you said it. If you run it back just a little bit, right before that ball is thrown, when you're talking about cover three, John Parker, you said this guy has deep third, and you see him taking that step forward to take middle third, which obviously your responsibility needs to back here. To me, the most exciting part of this play really is if you watch Lane Kiffin down here, he does not raise his arms before this ball is caught and signal touchdown. You see Coach Kiffin right down there. He is not signaling touchdown before it's caught. Not happy. That, That's he, a big win for Auburn. That in is. My opinion. That right is. <laughs> Switching gears to Auburn's offense, and just as we saw Auburn's defense give up some big plays, Alabama's defense does the same thing, getting beat deep with a deep throw to Duke Williams right here. This, to me, John Parker, and it, you, you see the, the pre-snap alignment looks just like man coverage, and if Nick Marshall sees that with Duke Williams, you're going to take your chances. This is just too big, too physical, too fast. That's I'm going to float it up and let this guy go make a play. Yeah, he does a good job, and I think Nick Marshall is not getting enough credit as a passer. He, he's really come a long way, and we see some really big throws. This is a great throw. He puts the ball in a good position, but Duke Williams is just too big, you know, making a play right here. The coverage is not terrible. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are getting on Eddie Jackson and talking about how bad a game he had. I mean, the coverage is there. It's just because of his height and his size and how he high points the football, you're able to put it up there, and Duke Williams knows how to go attack the ball. It's, it's a pretty nice job by Duke Williams understanding where this ball is probably going to be. And the kid's just an elite receiver. He is. There's not much you can do about this. This is a good, a good throw and a good route and, and, you know, ends up in a big play. I'll say this, too. A nice protection up front by the Auburn offensive line. You watch this play develop. Nick Marshall's going to need a little bit of time in the pocket. And Chad Slade comes over, gets a little extra block right there. So a good job by the offensive line giving him time to step up and make a pretty good throw there as well. Later on in the second quarter, we see Auburn hit another big play. And just as we saw Mincy have his eyes in the backfield, we see the same thing from the Alabama corner. We don't know really what coverage we're playing. And Nick Marshall throws, throws a great ball right on the money. He knows he's running out of room, running out of real estate deep in the end zone, and puts a, puts a strike on him. Yeah, Nick Marshall was absolutely on point in this game. And I think one thing you look at pre-snap is those two guys right there, and you can leave it right there, but – you see these two that close in, 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 in small proximity on the same side of the field, that's tough for any defensive coordinator to handle, Duke Williams and Sammy Coates. You find your man covered. That's just an absolute bullet from, from Nick Marshall. To throw that route, you know this better than anybody, and, and not have that much air underneath the football, 
Uh, and Sammy Coates has the speed to run by really any corner in the league if you're not going to be physical with him at the line of scrimmage. Definitely. Nick Marshall throws it. Couldn't have been thrown a better ball. He's running out of real estate and has to throw the perfect ball. This is going to go to the back at the end zone. So a great pass and catch by Auburn right here. Uncharacteristic mistakes right here from, from Blake Sims coming out throwing a pick. We didn't see many picks from, from Blake all year. And right here, this might be a little case of trying to get it to number nine a little bit too much. Uh, we see, uh, you know, a classic route. We've got a three-level route. Outside's going deep. Amari's going to run a 10-yard out route. And then we've got the third level right here, the running back in the backfield. And the quarterback is just reading, reading it top down. That's one, two, three read. When he sees that cornerback drop, he should be checking it down to the, to the running back. So this is almost – John Parker, Blake Sims is, is reading more space than he has actual receivers or coverages. He's, he's, he's looking at areas of the field as far as his progression. Yeah, this is, I mean, top-down read from the top all the way down to the bottom. This is one, two, three the whole way. See the Saints run a ton of this. Drew Brees is looking downfield, throws it so many times underneath, and they get these, you know, easy 10-yard pickups. But the things you can't do on this Which play. Kind of right here, you look that, at all that space That's there. it. With that, with that soft corner, what you can't do is force it, though. And when they got two guys covering Amari, this is, this is what you can't do right here. See another angle of, of Robert Frost around the deep route right here. So he's clearing it out. Omari's going to come underneath and run this corner route. And then the running back's coming out in the flare. We're trying to read the cornerback. And as he drops and gets depth, then you just got to check it down. This is just a, just a simple fact of trying to force the ball, trying to do too much when it's not there. Late right here in the second quarter, we see Blake Sims throw another costly interception. We've got a cover two right here, and we're designed to run a cover two beater. Um, DeAndre's coming in the, in the back. Pretty decent pocket by the Alabama offensive line. I think this ball just gets away from, from Blake, and he throws the pick. Yeah, one thing sticks out to me, maybe Montrevious Adams has a little bit to do with this. And you'll see the big D tackle floating back here. And when we get the end zone shot, you'll see big number one. He kind of floats right into that pass lane of Blake Sims. Not sure if last minute he sees him. Maybe tries to float it up over the big D tackle. Here you see Adams coming right across right there. Maybe that has something to do with it, or the ball just slips and slides out of there. But nonetheless, another big break for Albert in this game and uh, unable really to capitalize at the end. But uncharacteristic of Blake Sims, uh, these inaccurate passes. It really is, and I, and I think he does a good job of dropping in, and it, this could be Blake. He's looking at this guy first, so this is his first read, and as this guy comes in right behind him to hit a second read, he probably sees him in the last second and just tries to hold on the ball just a little bit too long. Two-point conversion right here in the fourth quarter, but I think the thing that stands out is we're, we're taking away Amari Cooper, and it's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. So Amari's going to take both of these DBs with him, and – you know, it takes almost a perfect throw and a good route outside by DeAndrew um, and what was pretty good coverage. No, the coverage is blanketed. you got to get that ball down towards the ground, and I think you pointed it out, John Parker, is you're taking away the explosive device, Amari Cooper right there. So, to me, as an Auburn guy, I see this and I'm like, okay, it's not number nine, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, you can live with this. It's, it's a great throw, perfect on time. He throws it low, and, you know, this is a play where at least you're not getting beat by the best guy, one of the best guys in the country. Big run by Nick Marshall right here, and what Alabama fans were scared of was this explosive runs from the Auburn offense. Yeah, zone read, and so we knew zone read is something that can give this defense problems, and I talked to a guy Saturday, and he said, do you think – Gus Malzahn is in Nick Saban's head, and I think it's interesting to see the yards that have been put up the past two years, and you say that, but to me it's more of there's no other offense that gives you the capabilities of what this Auburn offense has the past two years. And I went back and I studied Mississippi State, and I studied Ole Miss, and you either just you're not dynamic at, at the quarterback position or you're not committed to the run with this guy right here. The ability to get to the corner and get to the edge and hurt you north and south. Mississippi State doesn't have that this year. We know Ole Miss doesn't have that this year. So really, I think what the problem is, and it's not just Nick Saban, it's everybody, you, you just don't see this. You can have an offense that runs zone read. You can have an offense with a mobile quarterback. You can have an offense that spreads the field out. But to be able to do all those things and then be dynamic as a runner – I think Auburn's the only team that really can do that, and that's why they give teams headaches here. You're just going to see Alabama understanding that we're going to try and take away the perimeter, going to try and take away the edge. Landon College is going to come down and blitz. You're going to get another blitz from a defensive back here. And Nick Marshall, a nice call just to keep this football and get north and south. 
And you'll see here as the play develops, there's going to be multiple Alabama defenders really that aren't even touched. You can see these two not really blocked, not really going to get a block here. But you only have to get a hat on a hat. This is not a devastating offensive line. I've talked about it a lot. Nick Marshall is fast enough. As Chad Slade gets up and a nice job here, just, just square one off for me. And Nick Marshall shows you how, with his speed, he can make a defense pay. Yeah, very impressive to see the, the versatility, the dynamic of Nick Marshall getting downfield, running, making plays happen, and a good job by the, by the offensive line right here, getting him, get him going. And you'll really see, this gives you a better look, Blitz is going to come here, Blitz is going to come here, and Slade's going to get up here and do a nice job. And you'll see some of these red jerseys over here really not even going to be touched. But again, that's what the zone read does. It takes visual deception, takes the eyes off of what Nick Marshall really wants to do, and that's hurt you north and south right here. This is a great angle of how this play develops. And you'll see the blitz come from the right side, and Nick Marshall really and truly just has that ability to hurt you in a hurry right there. 51's not even blocking anybody. Go get a safety. Get on the third level. And it just shows you how dynamic he can be as a runner. Cole, third down to two right here, and kind of a theme we saw from Auburn all day. They were two of eight on touchdowns in the red zone. They were able to kick five field goals, but getting out here, getting as close to the end zone and not being able to stick it in for six. I think one reason you saw Auburn get away from the run game, when I watched the game, I was really frustrated that later on, as Auburn inched into the red zone and inside the 10, got away from the run. But some of these, some of what we're going to show you here is why Alabama overcommitting to the box, overcommitting to the run, and really, I think Gus Malzahn didn't have confidence in his offensive line being able to get a push. Thus, Ford decided to go to the air. Nice job here by Kirby Smart in his defense. Again, going to try to force that misread and really attack. The penetration is going to come right here. I believe it's Ashawn Robinson. He really gets a nice push on Avery Young. And that's going to kind of blow the play up. But you'll see Ryan Anderson, seven. He's coming hard down. That would normally be your guy on a zone read that you're going to let go. But that extra defender now is down in the box, so Nick Marshall doesn't have much of an option to hand this football up. But this early penetration right here is what's going to blow this play up. And then you have two defenders that are crashing down on that zone read. And you'll see how this play develops right there. Just a lot of penetration in the middle, two defenders to the outside. Now later on, I felt like there was a lot of yards, a lot of room for Nick Marshall to keep different balls but again, you can go back and you can say, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. But you can say, as this play develops a little bit more, you can say, wow, Nick Marshall had all this space over here to keep this football. Well, not when you have a defender right there in your face. You're not going to take that opportunity. You have to hand that ball off. Penetration was coming here, and Ryan Anderson can collapse from that defensive end spot because he knows he has outside contain here from an extra defender. Yeah, he knows he's out of help, but Alabama's really selling out for the run right here. You know, if Auburn maybe could have thrown, try to throw it a little bit instead of trying to run this down in the red zone, I think it could have helped him out just because we were so overcommitted to the run. And they did. They, they went back to that a little later. If, if Nick Marshall is as accurate early on as he was for the rest of the game, first few drives when they get down around the red zone, he missed a couple passes in the end zone. The outcome of this game could have been a little bit different. Cole, pretty standard run right here. And just a, one add-on, the sand linebacker blitzes right here. But really kind of a miscommunication in the run game. And, you know, when you see these breakdowns in the run game, it doesn't look like a whole lot. But, but blocking the wrong guy when somebody's blitzing is really catastrophic for a run, and you have no chance. No, it is. And, and against a group like Alabama, who can be so quick north and south and can penetrate when they need to, I always am concerned about guards pulling because I feel like that gives a defensive line that's talented extra time to get in the backfield and cause problems. And you'll see here, a lot of times what blitzes do is not just bring a guy that can get into the backfield quickly and make a play, but they can disrupt the play from the beginning. And you'll see Reggie Raglan going to blitz here. C.J. Uzoma redirects and takes Reggie Raglan, which is going to allow D.J. Petway, a defensive end, to just really bust loose and really go untouched. Avery Young over here at left guard is going to pull. I think he's designed to kick out Petway, but because you got some miscommunication here and the blitz by Raglan really kind of jumbles things up, now you turn a defender loose and he's in the backfield busting this play up. You'll see why this play is not supposed to go to the outside, which Nick Marshall does, is when Corey Grant comes around, his job is to occupy this outside defender. 
Sammy Coates is going to run off to try and occupy the safety. Corey Grant's going to run to the flat. That occupies the defender here, which again, it's all about causing space pulling defenders to the outside, and then giving Nick Marshall a run lane in the middle. So trying to open up some space, utilizing Corey Grant to the outside and his speed, but the penetration here with the blitz is what kind of jumbles everything up. We'll get a great view from the backside as well right there, and that's why Nick Marshall is forced to bounce that ball outside. He keeps it initially because he wants to utilize that jet sweep to the outside, but with that penetration, there's nowhere to run, has to force it out. Yeah, that one little blitz, one man adding on, which is a run-stopping blitz. We're not trying to get a safety, I mean, to get a sack or anything. We're trying to disrupt the run, and that one little guy just blows the whole play up. Cool, we got third and eight right here. Auburn's in their own territory. Uh, talk to us about what happens, the breakdown in this play, and what, what causes the eventual Nick Marshall interception. Yeah, I'm going to let you talk about, as a quarterback, moving out of the pocket mentally where you need to be. But this play really breaks down fairly early and you'll see Alabama's showing a blitz here. You've got two down linemen, and you've got basically four stand-up defenders, and then your two big linemen that are down. You're going to get a three-man game here at the bottom. You're going to get one, two, and then wrap inside. So it's just a three-man game. You work on these every day in pass rush over and over and over. It's not a difficult deal. And the, you'll see Trey DePriest is going to drop back in coverage. You don't have to worry about him. Now, when your defender drops, your eyes immediately need to go back inside because where's your nearest threat? Your nearest threat to the quarterback's right here. We can give up something back here and just push it out and push it out and allow our QB to step up. You cannot allow penetration up the middle. That will disrupt timing, rhythm, the pocket. It affects the pocket faster than anything else. So Sean Coleman's got to slam this guy back in when he sees his defender coming around, and then you trade and you trade. But what's weird about this is you got 62 Slade who doesn't have anybody on him. You've got to react faster. When you go back in your pass set and your defender drops back, your eyes immediately come back inside. And honestly, I would say go ahead and step back inside to try and make sure you're protecting the interior of that pocket. There's the three-man game. Doesn't get back in time. Forces Marshall outside of the pocket and you can take it from here. Yeah, it's, it's tough as a quarterback. You know, it's third down and eight. You want to make a play. It's getting late in the game, and the worst thing you can do is throw interception. So you just got to take your medicine, throw out of bound. At this point right here, Alabama's got them locked down. There's nobody open. There's nobody to throw to. And as a quarterback, you, you never want to run right and throw back left. Just there's too many bad things that happen. You know, balls get tipped, and that's what we see here. It's just all the guys are trying to come back, trying to make a play, but you, there's so many guys unaccounted for. You can't see where everybody's out. When the play breaks down like this, just bad things tend to happen. And, and you know, Nick Marshall just, you know, trying to make a play as hard as he does just, just forces it a little bit right here. Yeah, just a bad decision. Five minutes left to go in the game right here. We've already seen Nick Saban get all over Lane Kiffin for trying to throw the ball too much. So we're going to put it on the ground, let Derrick Henry take it over. I think this is just a good, hard, physical run right here by, by Derrick Henry and especially the guys up front. Yeah, one thing sticks out to me, left tackle. Austin Shepard had to move over from right, Cam Robinson out. Stay with your guy, continue to push. That's what really allows Derrick Henry to bounce back because the contain was there over Austin Shepard. He kind of forces that back inside, and that really opens the cutback. Watch 79 here. Now you're, this is obviously your run lane, but if that closes up, your cutback's going to be here. This is contained, maybe a little bit over here as well. You'd like to see Gamel President close down a little bit faster after the cutback, but Shepard, by staying with this block, just stay on him, keep body on a body. That allows Henry to bounce back and find a lot of running room. Yeah, great job moving over. O.J. Howard does a good job of kicking it out, but it's just staying through the play the whole time right here. Austin doing a great job. 25-yard TD run by here by Derrick Henry. And, you know, what doesn't get talked about is, once again, Austin Shepard coming out and throwing a tremendous block, blocking two guys and springing Henry for the touchdown. Hey, you love to pull as, a, as an offensive lineman. Get out in space, and you'll see Shepard really pull around and, to me, it's just impressive to be able to go from right to left in the middle of the game, not only not miss a beat, but really perform at a high level. It's an excellent job by that young man. He'll definitely be missed. But when he goes low, you'll see kind of a poor angle back here and really going to interfere with his ability to make the tackle as well once this play gets rolling. Yeah, taking, taking two is huge. It's what eventually allows Derrick Henry to get going. And once this big guy gets speed, but, but Austin Shepard, we, we'll highlight him right here, is taking out two guys. You see him, this guy having to hop over, he cuts the guy, and after that there's nobody left, and he just outruns the safety. 
end zone angle right here, Austin Shepard is just going to loop around, pull, seal the edge. Uh, you know, can't say enough about him having to go from the right side to the left side. Cole, that's pretty tough going and playing two sides of the line, isn't it? No, it's no doubt. You can see a little lightness stance right there, kind of giving it away. But we talked about angles, run fits. You, you've got to find a way to fight through this and get something on Derrick Henry and at least force him to change direction a little bit. So last game of the SEC season right here is the SEC championship coming up, Alabama versus Missouri. Cole, what are your thoughts on the Tigers and, and the Crimson Tide meeting in Atlanta? I think there are a couple of guys on this Missouri defense. You look at Marcus Gold and Shane Ray, both defensive ends, similar to this defense last year. They're going to be active, and they can make some things happen. And Missouri really does like to mix some things up on the back end. I look at these matchups across the board. There's not a lot that Missouri brings to the table that I feel can really cause legitimate problems for Alabama. And again, I said it last week. I said it a lot of weeks ago. I'll say it this week. I'll say it every week. Amari Cooper is your explosive device. If you don't want to get hit by the shrapnel, O.J. Howard, Derrick Henry, T.J. Yeldon, name any other offensive player, you got to find a way to defuse the bomb. I don't care how blatantly ridiculous you have to go and try and cover this kid, but you've got to find a way to remove him from the game a little bit. He can go six for 100 in a touchdown. Right. Let's keep him from 14 for 205 and four touchdowns because when he goes that crazy, I think everybody on defense gets discombobulated. Everybody begins to turn their focus there. And then all of a sudden you got guys on their heels. And that's when that run game begins to open up for Alabama. Yeah, and I think the problem with that is we haven't seen it from anybody. At the end of the season now, we still have not seen a, a team really step up and try to try to do something different to guard Amari. I think the biggest defense that, that Missouri is going to have with this is their, their guys up front. They did a world of hurt on the, on the Arkansas quarterback last week. So that will be a matchup with Cam, you know, missing the end of the game. We're going to have some pr pretty good pass rushers coming at Blake Sims the whole and game. I'll, I'll say this, Alabama again, and, and we talked about it a little bit on Saturday, there still is that misconception, sort of a misperception really with people that Alabama is this lineup, square you up, o Oklahoma drill you, or let the offensive line and just run you over. They're not that team anymore. And, and I know Alabama fans don't like to hear that and analysts don't like to believe that. But this is not 2011 Alabama. It's not 09 Alabama. It's just not who they are. It's a lot more zone scheme. It's a lot more lateral. And Marcus Golden, Shane Ray, those guys up front can penetrate and cause some problems. But again, none of that matters if Amari Cooper's going bonkers. Honestly, none of that really matters. So can you find a way to neutralize Cooper? If so, Missouri can stay in this game. I think it's that easy. That system's in place. You got a quarterback that knows how to make things happen. They're going to push the football down the field. But at the end of the day, it's Amari Cooper or bust. I truly do believe that. Yeah, and I think you said it best. This is not the Alabama team of old. They're doing different things. They're trying to get the ball to different people in different ways. So it's just it's, it's interesting to see this offense keep evolving, keep evolving. Uh, but, you know, as Alabama goes to SEC Championship, Auburn's going and getting ready for bowl practice. So we got a new defensive coordinator coming in. Don't know who that is yet. But, you know, kind of, kind of rebuilding and, you know, a great time to get ready for, for the bowl and for the, the young guys getting some good practice time. I think you mentioned that, John Parker, is you know who your seniors are. Nick Marshall's not going to need a lot of reps. Reese Dismuke's not going to need a lot of reps. But you got Jeremy Johnson most likely coming into quarterback next year. Uh, you know, what is he going to be? How is he going to run and manage this offense? Because it will be different if he is your starter. And then along the offensive line, uh, you look at Braden Smith, who got some nice goal line reps this year. Austin Golson's a kid that's transferred in from Ole Miss. He'll be eligible next year. And then some of the younger guys like Xavier Dampier, can he move in and be a backup at center? So there'll be some valuable reps for some of these offensive linemen. And then on defense, uh, you, you lose Ben Bradley, you, you lose Gabe Wright, you lose Angelo Blackson. Some of these guys on the interior of that defense are going to need some reps as well. So this is a valuable practice time for a lot of kids on this Auburn football team. Yeah, it's really like an extra spring practice. So we got 10, 15 practices, however many the NCAA lets them have. But it's crucial to these guys getting out, get some reps, and getting experience against, the, against a good team. Thanks so much for joining this year on the AL.com Film Room. I'm John Parker Wilson. For Cole Cubitt, we'll break down the SEC Championship game next week, the Auburn Bowl game to, to, to come, the uh, Alabama game after that. So until then, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.